The Paramount War Saga in One Piece is often regarded as the best stretch of One Piece. But as much as this whole saga is awesome, I feel like the main part people remember from it is Marineford. Which is fair because Marineford is awesome. But I feel like because the whole saga follows one big story, the Marineford arc kind of overshadows everything else. Even though, in my opinion, some of the other arcs have a lot of stuff that is on par with Marineford. And the best example of this, I think, is Impel Down. Because this is a really short arc that comes right before Marineford, I feel like it gets overshadowed the most. Which is a shame because I genuinely think this arc is equally good as Marineford. I don't think I could think of a single criticism I have for Impel Down. I mean, maybe like one kind of, sort of, but not really. And one of the things that makes this arc work so well is Ace. Now, Ace doesn't really do anything in this arc, but he's still crucial in making it work. Up until this point, Ace has been that guy. He's got fire powers, he's Luffy's older brother, he's just cool. He hasn't really done much in the story up until this point, but the times he did get to do things were amazing. Even when he lost the black beard, he still looked pretty cool losing. So naturally, this is a person we want to save, which gives this arc a reason to exist. Even if you didn't like Ace that much, it's clear how much Luffy cares about him. He holds off on reuniting with his crew, and puts his journey of becoming the king of the pirates on halt, just to save his brother. This is the only time anything like this happens in the story. Every other arc we're always moving forward to the next place. They also keep drip feeding us information about Ace and his true identity which adds a lot of mystery and makes the audience want to find out more. Now because Luffy is completely alone without his crew we need some new side characters so the story goes ahead and adds freaking Buggy the absolute legend. Every side character introduced and reintroduced in this arc fucking slaps and a lot of the ones that get reintroduced are more entertaining here than they were in their own arcs, with Buggy being a prime example of this. Now, I always liked Buggy, but because we haven't seen him in so long and had been introduced to so many other and better villains, I just kind of looked at him like this goofy clown guy at the beginning of the story that I didn't think much of. But this arc and Marineford turns him into a peak character. First of all, he is fucking hilarious. Everything he says and does had me dying. The way he keeps making alliances and accidentally convinces people to join his crew is equally funny every time, and is something he didn't use to do at all, but is now a defining characteristic of him. We also have Mr. 3, Mr. B who as much as Little Garden is one of my favorite arcs, I never really thought much of, but he is amazing in this arc. The way him and Buggy keeps accidentally following Luffy deeper into the prison is so funny, and he actually ends up being really useful too. His wax powers save Luffy and the others like five times in Impel Down and Marineford, a character that you would never expect to come in clutch. Everything that happens in level 1 is so enjoyable, and it only gets better as we move on down. And I think the levels themselves are genius. Oftentimes in One Piece, the location that the crew fight at is often huge because there's so many different battles going on at once, with the crew all being split up. Up. And so, to more easily convey which character is where and which battle we are looking at, Oda will try to differentiate the location with different buildings and characteristics, and will typically include some maps to explain more easily. But Impel Down does this like 10 times better than in any other arc. Like in Wano, most places in Onigashima look the exact same, aside from the top where Luffy and Kaido fight. A lot of the areas are impossible to tell apart. In Punk Hazard as well, no matter where we are in the laboratory, every room looks identical. But in Ample Down, every single floor looks completely different. The first one has these red spikes, one floor is like a desert where all the prisoners get starved and tortured by the heat from the floor below, which is straight up just on fire. Everything in the floor below that is completely frozen and people are freezing to death. To be honest, this place just kind of sucks. Uh, I would not want to be in any of these floors. But Impel Down being designed like this perfectly informs the reader where they are in the prison. It has a very natural sense of progression having six floors to get through, the sixth being the goal. And they're not just cool backdrops for the characters to fight in, they actually play a role in the story, and the characters have to adapt to the different circumstances. And it also gives the reader a sense of anticipation, as we know the floors get worse and worse, and that the prisoners get stronger and stronger the lower down you go. Which is also what's awesome about progressing down to a new level, because you know you're gonna meet some awesome new side characters every time. And we quickly get introduced to one of the best characters in all of One Piece, Bon Clay.
Bon Clay is just that fucking guy, man. I have never seen such a legend of a man before. This guy is the best friend you could ever ask for. The amount of times he comes in clutch in this arc is insane, but I think one of his best moments for me is when he doesn't come in clutch. When Luffy faces off against Magellan, Bon really wants to help Luffy like he always does, but he can't. He can't bring himself to help Luffy because he's too scared and instead runs away, leaving Luffy to almost die. I really like this because it humanizes him and shows us that no matter how good of a person he might be, he's not perfect and does something that he deeply regrets. This gives so much more meaning to every time he helps Luffy after this, especially when he actually does go up against Magellan at the end, something he was terrified to do earlier. And I think Magellan himself is a pretty solid antagonist. Now honestly, Magellan isn't like amazing or anything, like he definitely could be more interesting, but I don't think his character really has any flaws. I really like his powers and I really like how truly dedicated he is to his job. He believes in the cause so much so that he tries to kill himself after he lets the prisoners escape. I think it's always cool to see marines that genuinely believe what they're doing is right. I also really like the way he just beats Luffy. Time and time again in the different arcs in this saga, Luffy is reminded that he really isn't shit. Like compared to most other people, he just kind of sucks. I mean, he can't even use hockey yet. And Magellan is another reminder of just how outclassed he is and gets left for dead. But luckily, Bon Clay is still the GOAT, so he saves him. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's saving me! It's so awesome to see Bon Clay go through the freezing floor, fighting off wolves just to save Luffy and make up for leaving him earlier. And I love the way this contrasts so well with the other inmates. All the other prisoners have this very everyone for themselves mentality and nobody wants to really help each other or help Bon Clay find Luffy, which really makes us bond with him so much more. And I think my favorite moment from him is when Luffy is recovering and fighting off the poison. There's a 2% chance of survival, but this absolute legend cheers him on for 20 hours, even getting the rest of the people around to help cheer. As Eva says, he is the reason Luffy survives. And I gotta say, this secret club Eva has inside the prison is so cool. I don't really know how to explain why, but just the fact that the lower levels are so chaotic that he managed to make this whole ass society inside it is really funny. And Eva himself is, I think, a really dope character in this arc and the next. I like the way he acts as a mentor to Luffy and he keeps giving him drugs to help his injuries. It's clear that it pains him to do it because he knows how bad the side effects are, but can't deny Luffy when his conviction is so strong. The other mentor character Luffy gets is Jinbei, and I think this arc and the next is where Jinbei is the most entertaining in the whole story. I love how much respect he has for Luffy just based off the fact that he's Ace's brother. And man, the side characters just keep coming, like we get Crocodile and Mr. One. <laughs> It's like Oda was like, okay, let me just take the best side characters and villains I've written up to this point and throw them all in this arc. And what I think is one of the things that work best in maybe the whole arc is the devil fruits themselves. This arc, more than any other part of One Piece, takes full advantage of the devil fruits. Almost every single relevant character in this arc has a devil fruit, and if any one of them hadn't had one, the arc would not work. Eva heals Luffy and gives him drugs to help him recover via his devil fruit, and uses his death wink to stop Magellan's poison. Inazuma, which is a character I forgot to mention, but yeah, there's this random dude with a sick character design who uses his ability to cut stone and manipulate it to block doors off, shut off poisonous gas, and plays a big role in their escape. I'm guessing this is the guy who made Eva's secret club. Mr. 3 uses his wax powers to give Luffy armor to fight Magellan with. He puts up wax shields for the poison and mounts cannons with the wax walls. Magellan's devil fruit is obviously super prevalent as he kind of just spams it throughout the whole arc and is what makes him such a threat in the first place. Bon Clay uses his devil fruit to disguise himself and go to the lower levels to save Luffy. Even Hancock uses her powers to sneak Luffy inside the prison. They all are able to escape this prison because they use their devil fruits to their full potential, which is ironic because the whole place is surrounded by water, the one weakness of devil fruits. Jembei doesn't have a devil fruit, but he's still able to use the water to his full advantage, giving us one of the hardest panels of all time 
and securing a ship for them to escape with. I really wish Devil Fruit powers were this important and dynamic in other arcs. But even after they manage to escape and get out of the prison, they still can't fully escape because of the Gates of Justice. So for their final escape, we once again need the help of a Devil Fruit. And once again, we need the help of Bon Clay. <laughs> Man, how can one man have this much sauce, bro? Make it make sense. I don't have words to describe how much I love this character. He is just so perfectly written. I love the way every character has to work together to get out of this place. And what I love even more is that Luffy was the person who made them work together. Ultimately, the reason why Luffy managed to get in and out isn't because how strong he is, but because of who he is. He inspires the others to follow him because of how much conviction he has and how determined he is. He is a natural leader a captain, and that's the reason why people choose to follow him. No one else in this arc could have managed to do the same except for maybe Buggy, because they don't have those qualities. And this is where the arc kind of seamlessly transitions into Marineford, and man, was it some good food. Overall, like I said, I don't think Impel Down has a single flaw. Genuinely, everything was executed perfectly. It was perfect. There are, I guess, some things that could have been a bit better. Like I said, as much as I really like Magellan, he could have been a bit more complex, and even if he wasn't, some of the other jailers could have been better too. Like this dude, even though I like him, because he is pretty funny, but like just one more interesting antagonistic force would have been nice, like Shiryu for example. I do think he adds some nice lore to Impel Down and works great for world building by making this prison feel more real because it has history, but like I really don't understand what the point of Blackbeard going to break him out and have him join his crew was about. Like Shiryu has still not done anything in the story 500 chapters later, so I don't really get why this was treated with so much importance. It also would have been cool to see the walls of the prison actually break so that the floor floods in. Both sides could have used this to their advantage and it could have been a good use of mechanics. But again, I don't really think these are flaws, just areas of slight improvement. Because man, this arc is so fucking peak, dude. Way more peak than the arc I talked about last time. So check out this video to see what that arc was.